Hi friends! Today we will learn about cell theory. So let's start. In our last lesson we learned the commonalities of living things. And one major thing was that all living things are made up of at least one cell. So we will start to learn about the common characteristics of living things. In 1665, Robert Hooke was the first to view and describe cells. He also named them cell. He was examining a slice of cork and saw that it was made up of small structures that looked like small compartments and he named them cells. Living things can be as simple as an amoeba which is made up of only one cell. But the amoeba is still able to perform each of its life processes with the help of small organelles in the cell. Living organisms like plants, animals, birds, insects, and even we ourselves are made up of millions of cells. So we can say cells are the building blocks of life and that all living organisms are made up of at least one cell. With the advancement of scientific techniques and better instruments, Lots of advanced studies and researches have been done on cells by many. In 1839, the cell theory was formulated, which is mainly credited to Matthias Schulden, Theodor Schwann, and Rudolf Virchow. Now, we will learn about the cell theory. Cell theory is the latest view of scientists that explains how most life on Earth functions, and it is against the theory of spontaneous generation. Do you know what the theory of spontaneous generation is? It is an obsolete theory that states that living organisms can originate from inanimate objects. For example, dust can create fleas, maggots can arise from rotting meat, bread or wheat left in a dark corner can produce mice, and worms were created when dirt and water made mud. So, this is about living organisms originating from inanimate objects. It is an obsolete theory known as the theory of spontaneous generation. Now, coming back to cell theory, which is the accepted theory by scientists, with the invention of advanced microscopes like the compound microscope and the electron microscope, Scientists have discovered that all living things are made up of cells. Cells are the building blocks of all organisms, and cells can only arise from other cells. Organisms start as a single cell, and through a process of cellular division called mitosis, they grow and change into multicellular organisms. Mitosis creates identical cells, which later differentiates when given different signals to produce different types of tissues and organs. And this is the way complex organisms with different types of cells are created. Cells divide in the case of a single cell organism, but also they do not function together and form different individuals. So. So the study of cells is very complex and it is organized into cell theory that has the following basic tenets. The tenet of the cell theory is all living organisms are made up of cells. The covering of cells is made up of a semi-permeable membrane which is made up of phospholipids. This membrane brain holds the cytosol, which is a liquid present inside the cell. Cytosol is made up of water, salts, and other solutes. Many types of small specialized organelles may float in the cytosol that carry out different functions of the cell. Every cell contains DNA as the genetic material holds information necessary to carrying out all the life processes of the cell, like obtaining energy, reproduction, movement, excretion, so on and so forth. The tenet of cell theory holds true for every organism, except for viruses. 
Some scientists do not consider viruses as living things. We will learn about it later on. Now, let's learn the next tenet of the cell theory. Cells are the basic structural or organizational unit of all living organisms and are also the basic unit of reproduction. Cells are the basic structure of living things. All organisms are made up of at least one cell, and each cell consists of all the components necessary to perform each life process. In multicellular organisms, cells form tissues and tissues form groups to perform different functions. And these groups of specialized tissues are called organs. So, organs are groups of tissues with membranes that separate them from other tissues. Various organs join to form an organ system, and organ systems join to form an organism. So, no matter how complex an organism is, the fundamental biochemical reactions of taking in food and producing energy takes place inside the cell, which is why cells are the basic fundamental unit of living organisms. So this was the second tenet of cell theory. Now let's learn the third tenet of cell theory. All cells come from pre-existing cells. Cells do not occur or appear spontaneously. All cells have evolved from first primitive cells that arose on Earth billions of years ago. Hereditary information passes from the parent to the child cell. All cells are the result of cell division. When a cell is large enough, it replicates its DNA and its important components, and it then forms a separate cell which is its identical copy. Some variations in DNA can lead to some changes in the manner of their function. So, these were the three basic tenets of cell theory. We will learn more about cell theory in detail in our higher sections.